Hello, welcome to Sonography Radiology Training Channel. This series of videos is a scientific presentation about fetus ultrasound. This is the first video in this video series about fetal gastric pseudomass. During embryologic development, the fetal stomach descends into the abdomen and acquires its final position by seven weeks gestation. Gastric peristaltis appears after four to five months of gestation when significant neuromuscular development has taken place. At ultrasound examination from the second trimester onward, the fetal stomach appears as a uniformly anechoic, sharply circumscribed round structure in the left upper quadrant. Fetal gastric echogenic shadow mimicking a mass is an occasional finding during second trimester ultrasound. The reported incidence of this finding is about 1 in 300 second trimester scans. The origin of echogenic masses within the gastric lumen is uncompletely understood. There may be due to swallowed cells that aggregate because of the relatively poor peristaltic activity in the stomach early in the second trimester. The swallowed vernix in the stomach comprises the cell shed from fetal skin, urinary epithelium, and umbilical cord and leads to the formation of a pseudomass usually of size in range of 4 to 12 mm. Other causes for pseudomass formation include intra-amniotic bleeding secondary to subchorionic hemorrhage, amniocentesis, and abruption placenta. They inevitably disappear during follow-up examinations and hence further evaluation of this finding is unnecessary. Now we will review two teaching cases together. The first case, a prime gravida of 22 weeks gestation during anomaly scan. The fetal abdomen showed a rounded hyperechoic mass within the gastric lumen which appeared attached to the gastric wall. There was no change in position or mass with change in position of fetus. There was no follow on color Doppler ultrasound within the mass, and there was no gastric wall thickening or luminal dilatation. As we can see in this oblique section of fetal abdomen, a hyperechoic intragastric mass without any change in position. The fetus was re-scanned after one and a half hour and the hyperechoic lesion had disappeared. Now a second teaching case, a priming gravida of 30 weeks gestation was referred for routine ultrasound for assessing fetal growth. The fetal abdomen showed a slightly irregular, moderate echoic shadow within the gastric bubble. There was no calcification within the mass or at the periphery. The gastric walls were smooth and intact. Reassessment after one hour showed the same finding with no change in position or shape of the mass. There was no demonstrable blood follow in color Doppler ultrasound. The fetus was re-scanned at 34 and 38 weeks of gestation, and the echoic shadow persisted inside the stomach bubble with no other abnormal findings. She delivered a full-term healthy baby who remained symptomatic in the immediate postnatal period. The baby was breastfed as there was no vomiting or visible gastric peristaltis. The bubble opening was normal. The baby was scanned on the 10th day after birth for verifying the antenatal ultrasound finding. As we can see in this abdominal ultrasound scan on 10th day after birth, we can see a heterogeneously echoic mass inside the stomach. The mass showed no free movement inside the non-distended stomach nor could be displaced away from the gastric wall. A thin spike of very low velocity color follow was demonstrable at the periphery. 
the plain radiograph of abdomen and oral contrast study of stomach did not contribute a definite diagnosis. As we can see in this abdominal radiograph with oral contrast, there is no definite mass lesion. CT of abdomen with oral contrast showed a filling defect of fluid density with an attenuation of 10 to 20 holes will fit in the stomach. As we can see in this abdominal CT, a filling defect of 10 to 20 holes will fit in the stomach. The baby remained asymptomatic and on follow-up, the intragastric echogenic mass gradually disappeared within a week and on 17th day after birth, there was no gastric mass. The differential diagnosis of fetal intragastric mass includes upper abdominal masses contiguous with stomach wall, including endogastric teratoma, neuroblastoma, nephroblastoma, and pancreatoblastoma. Now, please pay attention to these final teaching points. Awareness of the clinical insignificance of a solitary fetal gastric pseudomass is important. This can help avoid unnecessary anxiety to the parents. Simultaneously, because it may be associated with more distal, total, or partial intestinal obstruction, it warrants meticulous examination of the fetal abdomen in search for more conspicuous diagnostic findings. Re-examination of the fetus shows that the gastric pseudomass will disappear either within a few hours or sometimes even after birth. Now, I suggest two others of my videos that are close to this video in terms of matter. And thank you for your attention.